Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to sew this cardigan. It's the Milo Cardigan by Seamwork, and I'm going to be doing the bishop sleeve hack, and I'm also going to be using a sloper to get a better fit on the cardigan. The piece of tracing paper to the left is my sloper. I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to cover how I went about making mine, but I do have links in the description of the resources I used. I decided to make a sloper for this pattern because the arm side was about two inches too small, and I didn't think my previous alteration method would work. I discuss how to make slight arm side alterations in another video, which is linked above. The sloper took a lot of time, somewhere around 20 to 25 hours, so it's definitely a project on its own, but now I can easily trace a sloper onto an existing pattern piece to ensure a perfect fit every time. This is what I'm doing now. The most dramatic alterations were done around the arm side and the shoulder shaping but I also altered the waist shaping to remove a lot of positive ease that was in the pattern. Since I altered the front pattern piece, I also needed to alter the back pattern piece so it would match. Once I created a mashup of my sloper and the Milo cardigan pattern, I then traced this onto another piece of tracing paper to preserve the original in case there were any alterations I needed to make in the future. I needed to keep the neck shaping on this pattern the same, otherwise I'd also have to alter the neck band piece. Once I got to the arm piece, I realized that there was no point in actually using the original. I just used my knit sloper arm that I made. Once I was happy with all my modified pieces, I finally moved on to making the bishop sleeve alterations. I cut three lines into the arm piece and added one inch of spacing between each line. I only cut one of these lines all the way to the top of the arm because I was worried that the piece would get to be too large. The two lines that ended at the elbow needed to have a crease created in the pattern to account for the additional width at the bottom of the pattern piece. I most definitely forgot to add seam allowances to the pieces I made using my slopers. So as you can see, I'm just sort of cutting my muslin fabric willy nilly and that's because the line that I traced is actually the line I'm going to be sewing on.
For the pattern pieces that I did not have seam allowances for, I ended up sewing over the tracing line just to make sure it didn't get rubbed off because I just used Taylor's chalk for that. I used a different color thread to sew the seams of the pattern pieces that didn't have seam allowances in them. I completed my first draft of my muslin and I only did one half of the cardigan to save on fabric. And there's a few changes I definitely need to make. First one is my arm. I'm still having issues and I think I figured out what happened. I think when I was doing my sloper, the class I was following told me to remove a dart in here that doesn't get sewn and it's literally just to have extra space in your arm side. And so I removed it for the knit sloper per the directions. I'm going to add that back in. Um, and I also think I'm going to lower the arm side a little further. You can see it sort of like pulls the whole cardigan out when I lift up my arm. So obviously I don't like that. And so I need to like bring it in closer to my body, I think which means I'll have to redraw my sleeve cap, which is fine. I'm super happy with where this, the shoulder sits, but I don't know why my seam is so far forward. I thought I had fixed that when I was doing my moulage, but apparently not. So I'm going to move that back. Um, I'm also going to add an extra inch of positive ease throughout the entire thing. And my bishop sleeve, as you can see, is very sad. <laughs> I added about three inches total to my sleeve and it literally looks like a regular sleeve. So I think I'm going to triple the amount of fabric, uh, extra fabric. Um, the other thing, so there's one last thing. <laughs> so I measured my sleeve length according to like the standards, which goes to your wrist, which I think is just a little too short for me. I think I just like my sleeves a little bit longer. So I'm probably actually going to add another inch to the sleeve. If you remember when I was cutting out this piece, I added an extra inch for the bishop sleeve to have like extra fabric puff over. So clearly my measurements or something was not right because this is still not long enough. So I'll probably add an extra inch to that. And then I will meet you back here and do another try on once all those things are done. So I've completed my second muslin for this cardigan and I'm so much happier. The shoulder seam looks normal. I added extra ease here. The bishop sleeve is legit now. It's actually a bishop sleeve. The length is so much better. This is probably a little long for some people, but honestly, I much prefer a little extra length. So when I move around, I don't feel like my sleeve is too short. So I fixed the arm side. So there's plenty of space, so I should be able to wear a t-shirt underneath. And the only thing I didn't do is re-sew the collar. Um, because that was, that worked fine last time. So I didn't bother with it this time. So now I'm going to head into actually making the cardigan. The fabric for the cardigan is a gorgeous cotton merino knit blend that has a slight ribbed pattern to it. It's got certified and was really, really nice to work with. The 8012 Jersey Needle worked really well for this project. 
Since I don't have an overlocker, I ended up just doing an overcast stitch to secure the edges for the pockets and some of the other raw edges. The pattern called for a bar tacking stitch along the top edges of the pocket to secure it. I instead chose to use one of my stronger stitches intended to be used on knit fabrics. This worked really well, but it was slow going and took a little bit of time to get the pocket actually attached. I use tracing paper on the back of these intense stitches to ensure my fabric doesn't get sucked into the machine. I also didn't follow the pattern directions for how to sew the arms in. I did a traditional set in sleeve just to make sure all of the ease was evenly distributed around the circumference of the arm side. All the modifications I've made so far have been for preference or fit. Now I'm working on the bishop sleeve. You're going to need to base some stitches around the end of the sleeve. This is to make sure it fits into the cuff. More detailed directions on creating a bishop sleeve are available on the Kashmir at website which I have provided a link to in the description below. I couldn't quite figure out how the neck band was going to work before I assembled it, but really it's just two layers of fabric with interfacing on one of the layers. You first base the pieces of the neck piece together, and then you attach it to the cardigan itself. The last piece to the cardigan was attaching the hem at the bottom. I ended up with a huge error um, in my measurements. This meant I had to take the hem off and I actually ended up trimming an inch and a third off the bottom of the cardigan to ensure that the hem, the neck band, and the cardigan sides all matched up at one unit. Because of how the hem is assembled, the inside edge is going to be exposed, but it is secured using a twin needle. I had never sewn buttonholes on a knit garment before, so I was pretty nervous to attempt this. Thankfully, nothing too crazy happened, and I came out with six great buttonholes.
I hope you enjoyed watching me sew this cardigan and are inspired to sew your own garments. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when my next video is released.